Hello my friends, how are you doing? So now there is an extension for Automatic 11.11 using SDXL. I show you how to install it and then we look at test renders and different settings on how to use that. Let's get started. It's called SD Web UI XL Demo Text to Image and it is super easy to install because the only thing you really need to do here is to go up here and copy this web address. Then you go over to Stable Diffusion, you go to Extensions and here you go to install from URL. Put the URL in here and then click on install. Takes a little bit until it is finished. And then of course, as always, what you want to do is to go to installed, check for updates, let this run until it shows you the necessary updates and then click on apply and restart UI. Then when you restart automatic 11.11 and go to the SDXL demo tab, you are greeted by these steps here you have to go through. So of course you need a Hugging Face account. You want to go to these two links. So you can click on the here at the end of the second and third point here. You click on them, you agree to the license agreement agreements. Then you click again on the fourth step on the here and create a new token. With the token you want to go to the settings and put the token in there. Which means inside of automatic 1111 you want to click here on the settings tab. You want to scroll down until you see the SDXL demo on the left side. Then scroll up again and you want to put the token here in the first line. There is some other choices but you don't need them them yet because what you want to do here is to click on apply settings. And as you see here in the last step, you want to restart the web UI. Now what this is doing is it is starting a pretty long download process that is about 15 gigabytes, I would say, where it is downloading the different models for SDXL and other files that this extension needs. Now this takes quite a while depending on your internet speed. And also the interesting thing here is for some reason this is not loading into your normal models folder this is loading into a different folder on your web drive. So you definitely have to download these files as far as I know. After all of this download is done, I would suggest that you restart the web UI again. When you go back into the settings for SDXL, you see that you have multiple choices here. Now in this case, you have a pop down here that also shows SDXL 1.0. But if we go to the Stability AI Hugging Face page, you can see that there is no 1.0 version. So I guess this is just a choice for when this model is coming out. So for now, you can only choose the 0.9 model in two different versions. One of them is 0.9 and the other one is with a FP16 setting here. Then below that you can choose if you want to use CPU. Don't use that, it's super slow. You want to use CUDA here, which means you need to have an NVIDIA card. And below that you can also enable the refiner, which is a really good choice because you need that to get actual good quality. Of course, if you change anything here, again, you need to click on apply settings. Now we are ready to use the SDXL demo. Now here it doesn't matter what you have chosen up here for the model or any other settings because this runs a different model that is loaded just inside of this extension. So no matter what you have chosen up here, it has no impact on that. Of course, you have here your positive and negative prompt. You can choose between a lot of different sampling methods. You can choose the step count, the width and height with a minimum of 1024 by 1024. You can choose a batch size, but personally, I would leave that at one because my computer had real problems having a higher batch size here. You have a CFG scale and of course a seat that you can also set to random seat. Now up here, you can see you have two different buttons. One is generate, the other one is refine. If refine is grayed out for you, you want to go back to the extensions tab. You want to click on check for updates and apply and restart because maybe something went wrong with your downloads. So this is going to do some extra downloads. Maybe again, 
several gigabytes. Now the process here is running in two steps. First you click here on the generate button and you let it run through until you see an image over here. Once this image has been rendered you want to click and drag it down here into the field for the refiner window. Again in here you can set the steps and also the refiner strength and then you want to click on the refiner button so this is running through it again. Now in this case I did not find that this makes sense in the same way with the 8020 formula that is used in ComfyUI for the steps. I found here that the refiner steps are kind of dependent on what kind of result you got from the sampling method you're using in the first step. So it can be okay that you use for example 30 steps for the base model and then again 30 steps for the refiner model. I did not get good results here when I I, for example, use 20 steps for the base model and then only five steps for the refiner model. But you might want to experiment with that to see what kind of results you get from that. Now let's look at some examples that I have prepared for you. So first we have here the Euler discrete model with different amounts of steps from 20 to 100 steps. You might not be able to see the 100, but the one on the right is the 100 step. Well, you can see See, it has certain impacts here on the finer details. Even in the 100 step, the composition is changing. But overall, it doesn't seem like many more steps give you much better results. Now here you have a comparison between the base steps and the refiner based on these base steps. And all of these examples now are using the Euler discrete sample method. So this is 20 steps and you can see that it has some nice details here. But look at the details on the body in the refinement of the image. Here we have 40 base steps. In this case, for example, when you look at the helmet, I would say it has some more details in here. In this case, you can see that the hand is looking worse than before. I found out later that in this case, you want to set the refiner strength lower, which seems to be kind of a denoise value. Here we have a 60 step base model and then it is refined. The refiner is always using the same step, the same refiner strength of 0.3. Again, here you might see some changes, some improvements. Then here we have the 80 step base render. Also look at the flowers, look at the details of the body, how things are changing. And then here we have 100 steps, which I personally feel like looks the best, also from the details of the face. But 100 steps, of course, takes quite some time to render. Now, in my case, because I have a RTX 4080, the render time was between 4 seconds and 30 seconds. But for you, that can be a lot longer because 1024 by 1024 is quite a high resolution. Next, we're going to look into the different sample methods. All of them are rendered with 40 steps, exactly the same prompt and negative prompt and the same refiner steps and refiner strength. Here we have the DDIM model. Left side is the base, right side is the refined image for that. Here we have the DDPM version. You can see that this gives a different result. I like it a lot more, especially the helmet is nicer and intricate. The face looks nicer and also the body has some nicer details. Here we have the DICE multi-step model. It's pretty nice. It has some nice results. The hand here on the refiner is melting into the armor. Again, you could probably improve that by changing the strength of the refiner. Next, we have the DPM solver multi-step model. It looks pretty nice, but I didn't like the results that much. And it has a lot of mistakes also in both of these renders. But one thing I also want to point out here is that you need a lot more experimentation what these sample methods are actually good for and what kind of settings work with them, the prompts, the negative prompts. So this is just a comparison on the exact same settings, prompt and negative prompt. Here we have the DPM solver SDE, which looks very much like an illustration, completely different style. I was very surprised by that because this again uses the same prompt and negative prompt and steps. Even with a lower step count, I still got 
these very highlighted edges around these drawing styles here. So that was pretty interesting. Then we have the DPM solver single step, which looks kind of nice. I like the reflection on the model, but it's not very exact, I would say. Here we have the Euler A discrete. A is for ancestral. Again, very nice when you look at the helmet, very nice intricate details in there, nice reflection on the body, nice consistency overall in the image. And also the Euler models render pretty fast. Here we have the Hoin discrete model. Now this is probably not for creating a person, but because this is a robot and it has a lot of hard surfaces and kind of architectural lines, I think this could also be good here. And I kind of like the result. I also like the details it has on the body. Again, the hand here could probably be improved in the refined model by changing the refiner strength. Here we have the KDPMA discrete. Again, A for ancestral. Very nice, although the refiner completely changed the face. I don't know why that happened and the hand completely went out of shape. Again, this could probably be fixed by changing the refiner strength. But the hair is pretty nice and also the skin looks very nice, although it kind of also changed the body inside of the armor. Here we have the KDPM2 discrete method. Very nice result, kind of strange hair, but in the refiner I also like how the blossoms look and how sharp they are and then in a little bit more background, you have some nice bokeh in here. So it has some things going for it. Here we have the LMS discrete model. It has very nice reflection. It is pretty good, it seems, with the hard surfaces also and the details on the armor. But the face doesn't look so good here. The PNDM model seems to be nice with hair. But on the other hand, I didn't like the details otherwise so much, although the face is not too bad. Here we have the UniPC multi-step model. This can be good for kind of photorealism with SD 1.5. And it seems even here you get something that has very nice details in there. But overall, all of this needs a lot of experimentation to see what works with what and how this gives you a better result. Now, the big question here is, is this as good as the version with ComfyUI I showed you in this video? <laughs> no, it's not even close, my friends. So here we have a comparison between ComfyUI, same prompt, same sampling method, same amount of steps. ComfyUI, I would say right now is the much better choice. This is the normal render version. This is the upscale version with the two methods I'm showing you. This is one of the methods. Now the eyes are here a little bit pooped. So yeah, I would say the Confu eye right now is absolutely the way to go for this because also it has more settings that you can apply. So personally, I feel like for now Confu eye is the clear winner on quality and what you can do with that. But of course, through experimentation, you might get a lot better results than I showed you in this video because this is just a technical test and not a show of what the quality can be with these models. Leave a subscribe if you like this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah. <laughs>